Hi, this is Paul Solt, and I want to show you how to update a Swift 1.1 project to the latest Swift 2 syntax. What you're going to do is you're going to open up your Xcode project. So here I have an older project, and when I open it, normally there's a little pop-up. Now, if you say no to that, you need to go to Edit, and then Convert, and to latest Swift syntax. So this is the first thing you want to do before trying to fix any of the errors that you're going to see, because there's going to be a lot of errors. The APIs have changed pretty significantly over the past year. Next, you're going to get this little pop-up. You really only want to do this one time. So let's hit next. And then we're going to update these two targets. We can hit next again. And we're going to let this go. All right, so now it's going to give me anywhere I need to update the code. Now, unfortunately, because we're going from Swift 1.1 to Swift 2, there are going to be some changes that are not going to be caught by this tool. And that's a little bit of a downside. But if you're going from Swift 1.2 to 2, then it's going to be a little bit easier. All right, so it's going to recommend some changes here to the syntax. And we can just go ahead and look at them. You'll see them on the right side of the screen by the scroll bar. And you can see anywhere where it's going to change. So there's some minor changes where we're getting rid of the some of the, the values here in some of these API calls. And let's jump over to our game view controller. This is also changing. So if you haven't already made these changes before, it's going to be uh, new changes for you. But Xcode is going to insert a lot of these changes for us so we don't have to think about them. And then we'll just hit save. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to click on this on the left to update the recommended settings. Now, if you don't see that, click on the little triangle here with the exclamation mark. Just do perform changes. That's going to update things so that they are better. Now we're going to see some errors that don't actually exist. So what you're going to do is either go to product and hit clean or do the shortcut, which is going to be the shift command K. You're going to do that and then you're going to build. So you're going to go ahead and either build or try to run. Build is easier, so that's the command B. And now we've got some more errors that we're going to need to fix. All right, so touches began changed. The API is totally different because NS set changed. So if you have anything with an NS set, that is going to have its API changed. You're better off just commenting this out and trying to override again. So if I start typing touches began, it'll show me the new syntax, which is the set of UI touch. Now this has changed in Swift 1.2 as well as Swift 2. So there's, there's two different versions. If you're looking at this, you're going to see uh, UI touch here instead of NS object. This is going to be the latest syntax with Swift 2. All right, so that's what you need. Once you get that line of code, you can get rid of the, the bottom portion and we can go ahead and build and you will see that has been updated. All right, so with that update, we now are introduced to another change in the, the API. So now we're getting a set and a set is different than what we used to get, which was uh, an array from Objective-C. So we don't have an any object method anymore. We actually have a, a new method to call, which is going to be first. That's gonna, just going to give us the first touch. Now, you only have to do this if you're working with touches. And it's going to complain about this extra call. We don't need to do this anymore. So we just need the first object. Since we have a set of UI touches, we can just grab the first touch. So if I hit Command B to build, you'll see that that issue goes away. And we've cleaned that up. And I'm just going to, I want to keep this so I can show you what we're changing from. So let's just paste this in here and show you how we update this. All right, so that's just going to be the first, and we no longer need this ending. Let's move that line up right there. All right, so that's what we changed from. And it looks like Xcode didn't really catch all of these, so this is surprising. I guess some of the other issues obscured some of this, but we can go ahead and just click on these and do the replace. So the print line has been replaced with a new print, and we can just do that. Xcode will also recommend that you switch over to let variables, so you can click on these and do the conversions, and it will convert those for you as well. So we're just going to, I guess, each of these line by line. All right, so now I'll do Command B again to build. We're going to see we still have some issues on the left, so let's take a look at them. And now this one's actually a little bit tricky, and I'm surprised that Xcode didn't catch this. What happened here is an API change. 
Anywhere you have an error parameter, they no longer exist in the new Swift 2 API. So you need to actually change this to not have the error and hopefully you can find the new API call. So for the most part, you can probably just delete this comma all the way up until the error code because it's now using the new throw, try and catch. And so we don't do that. All right, so that's gonna help us a little bit. Now it's gonna tell us we can't force unwrap. So before we had to have the syntax, we get rid of that exclamation at the end. And let me just keep a copy of this so you can see what exactly we're changing from. So we're gonna get rid of this nil. You just wanna make it look like this for this line of code if you're working with NS data. And since this is a sprite kit game, we're gonna have uh, some of this call. And, and this stuff is automatically written for you if you start a new game project in Swift 2, but if you're going from existing one, you're gonna have to update it. All right, so now that we've fixed those two issues, there's still another issue. And that's because we've got the new try catch model. And here we can do a try. We're going to have an issue with this though, because we're not handling the errors. Now in this case, I don't wanna handle the errors. I assume that if there's an error trying to unarchive my game scene file, that I don't wanna run the game. So this is important to understand the distinction here. This is something that's only gonna ever run once. If this is something that the user is invoking, I'm gonna to need to write a little bit different code to make sure that I don't crash on start because if this does fail, it's going to crash. So we're gonna add the try and then we're gonna force it using the explanation mark. We go ahead and do that. We no longer have to handle the errors. What happens is the app will crash if this scene file does not exist. So that's a, a project configuration issue and we're all squared away on that. All right, so next up, we are getting a, a question about the conversion to a game scene. And so here, again, the API changed a little bit how you use the as operator change. We know that this is going to be a game scene object, so we can just do the, the force and we can get access to that scene and just return it. All right, so now that we've fixed the errors in those two issues, it's gonna let us know that we can switch over to the let syntax, so we can replace these right here. And you can just replace a lot of var anywhere you, where you're not actually changing it a whole lot um, from what object it's pointing to, you can change it to a let. And so that's sort of an optimization. It's not really required, um, but it will make your application move a little faster, though it's not gonna be noticeable unless it's in a very tight loop. All right, next up, we had an API change with texture. Texture is, uh, I believe it was in, implicitly unwrapped optional, now it is just an optional. And so we're gonna have to add a explanation mark to unwrap it. So if I look at it, you can see SK texture is now a optional. So it's got this question mark at the end. That means that we have to unwrap it to use it. Now, since I just created the, the sprite here with the name of the resource, if this fails, I want the app to crash because this is something that means that the resource is not in the Xcode project. And that's something I have to fix as the programmer uh, if this was somewhere where the user's picking pictures, then you need to be a little bit more careful and maybe you don't want to force unwrap. You want to check to make sure that the image exists before you try to use it. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the image itself with its alpha transparency for the physics body. So I get per pixel collision detection. And we do that a couple times in this project. Uh, again, I'll do that for the asteroids as well. So we can just fix it by adding that exclamation mark, which is force unwrapping it so that it works. All right, what else do we have? Uh, down here, I've got some, some values that I don't actually use. Now I'm using the, the var keyword. I can use let here since I won't be changing these yeah, if I don't need to change them and that will get rid of the errors or you can just comment out the code that you're no longer using. So I'm not using this code, so it's also complaining about that. I just sort of put it in there. I probably should just keep it as a comment and we can go ahead, comment that out and that's no longer gonna get executed. All right, so there's gonna be other instances where you can switch over to the let syntax. I'm not gonna go through all of them right now, uh, but I do wanna talk about this last issue. So if you're getting this issue, this is because your test targets weren't updated. And if you're making a game, you really don't need tests right now. 
you're probably not using them in your first project. Uh, these are unit tests and they cause all kinds of issues when we're converting to the newer Swift versions. And so what you have to do to fix this issue, if you see, let's jump back to that issue. If you see that it's a dash F, that means it's a framework issue. If you see a dash L, that means it's a library issue. And so what you're gonna do is you are going to jump over to your project navigator on the left. You're gonna click on your project title and you're gonna click on either space game or space game test, whatever the name is. Now, it's important that we look at that issue. So it's talking about space game test. So you have to read what target it's talking about. If you have multiple targets like we have here, so click on your project, then click on this right here, and then you should see targets. Now, if you don't see targets, hit this little button here to show them. I have two targets. I have the actual game and I have unit test. Now, I've never written a unit test for this project, but they were just there by default because they were basically forced upon you. There was no checkbox to disable them. So because this is an older project, I didn't have control over the newer projects, you can now disable unit tests for your game projects. So that's super useful. All right, so once we find the, the unit test target, which is gonna be on the left side, you are gonna switch from what it's probably on is general to build settings. This is a tab along the top. Now, depending on if that was an F or an L, you're gonna search for frameworks or library. And so if I search for library, you should see some things. All right, so basically these these search paths, I, we're really just looking for the search paths. So if I just search for search paths, we're gonna find that there's a framework search path, there's also a library search path, and for whatever reason, the library one, okay, there it is. So here's the library one. So if you just search for a search paths or library or framework, you're gonna find the library search path or the framework search paths. Now, for whatever reason, this has a, a, a value that's already been set. We don't need this. And in fact, new projects that you create will not use this. So this is kind of, I guess, legacy or it was just an error or something. I'm not sure exactly. So what we're gonna do is we just delete this. So you can just click on it and hit delete. And I actually accidentally got that pop-up. So once we have that fixed, you can go ahead and build and the only issues we should now see are those let syntax. So let's see what happens. Right now it's it's indexing. I did command B to, to rebuild. And I guess it finished, but didn't show me that it finished. We can probably run the application now. And so now we have the, the space game. I can move the spaceship around the game. I can dodge these asteroids to get points for asteroids passing past the bottom of the screen without touching the player, the, the score resets. So that is the game. I've now updated it from Swift 1.1 to Swift 1.2. So really the biggest gotchas are usually on anything that's working with an error object, and, and those have changed because the APIs have changed, and anything working with the set uh, because the APIs have also changed for that as well. All right, so that is updating. The, the last thing that you can do is anywhere where you're not going to be mutating a variable, you can switch them over to the let. So you can just go through these, click on each one, and change them to let. Now, if you have a bunch, you can copy and paste. That might be faster. So I can just go through here, find any of these, and this is gonna be a lot faster than using the code assist to fix it since it's just so numerous in the code. We'll go ahead and build again and now we have no issues. So that's how to update to Swift 2 from Swift 1.1.